Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. Board of Commissioners public meeting Wednesday, January 2nd, 2019. The time is 7-12. Pursuant to the requirements of the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, notice of this meeting was published in the November 29th, 2018 issues of the Nutley Sun, the Herald News, and the Star Ledger. A copy is on file. A copy of this notice has been posted uh, on the Nutley Town Hall Bulletin Board, and a copy is on file in the Municipal Clerk's Office. Commissioner Rogers. Here. Commissioner Tucci. Here. Commissioner Evans. Here. Commissioner Petraco. Here. Mayor Scarpell. Here. All present, Mayor. Communications. Thank you, Mayor. The Nutley Junior Raider Booster Club has submitted a letter requesting permission to hold a raffle on Sunday, February 10, 2019, between 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. at the Parks and Recreation Building, which is located at 44 Park Avenue. I need a motion. Move it. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. And that's it for communications. Bills. Yes, Mayor. Bill list for January 2nd, 2019. Public Affairs, $93,600. Revenue and Finance, $2,629,633.40. Public Safety, zero. Public Works, zero. Parks and Public Property, $532,280.66. Water Utility, $322,038.91. Total payroll is $830,137.35 for a grand total of $4,407,690.32. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. And that's it for Bills, Mayor. Public comment on agenda items only, Madam Clerk. Yes, Mayor. All persons addressing the Board of Commissioners regarding community concerns should approach the microphone and provide their name and address for the record. Unless further time is granted by the Board, each person <coughs> should limit their address to three minutes. All remarks to the Board and its individual members must be addressed to the Mayor. The Mayor may defer citizens' comments to the appropriate member of the Board. Dialogue between citizens and others addressing the Board shall be allowed unless the Mayor or Presiding Officer or the majority of the membership of the Board shall determine that the interests of decorum and or the expeditious conduct of municipal business are being adversely affected by such dialogue. Rory Moore, <clears throat> Rory Moore 462 Chestnut Street. Mr. Scarpelli, I have a question um, in general on the bill list. Last meeting, I believe there was a resolution for Peony not to exceed $165,000 for the year. I believe this is written in Microsoft Excel. In Excel, you can do a run in total. And I'd like to know if we could have a run in total for the total of <coughs> Like a, you could put an open request in and give you all no, no, it's not, no, it's on this bill, the bill list. This is written in, in a software so package. Every, so every week that the Pannoni bills are on there, it'll be on the bill list. It, they'll, they, they'll be on. They always are. Uh, no, no, I understand that, but you can, because this is the software package that is used for this, you could do a run in total. For That's what not you spent what the bill the list year. is, Mr. Moore. The bill list is for us to approve the bills. No, it's I not understand. For a running total of Pannoni. So if you'd like a running total of Pannoni's bills for the year for 2018, I uh, suggest you put in a uh, Oprah request. Okay. Maybe I'll switch to address the board of board of. Uh, on agenda items only. Seeing none, move to board of commission announcements. Any announcements, commissioners? Um, I, I have an announcement, Mayor. Um, it's actually much more than an announcement. Um, I would prefer, I know we've, I've been talking about uh, my white paper, and I was prepared to do it at the last meeting, but I had an unfortunate personal situation and I wasn't able to be here. Um, I can give a verbal tonight if it pleases everyone or if 
if, if everyone is in agreement, I, I can wait till the next meeting and actually have a written uh, document to hand out the actual white paper. It's up to you, Commissioner. Um, Which way you want to handle it? Well, with, with everyone's permission, everyone's been asking about it, and I don't want anybody to think that I'm stalling because I do have the information and the statistics to support it. But basically, this white paper was uh, to assess the impact of multifamily housing, you know, on the township and whether or not we could sustain any more uh, housing. And while there is a, a tax benefit associated with that, there is also uh, some stresses on, on services and potential stresses on infrastructure, you know, and I know we have, I, uh, Mayor, I know I asked your department about sewer capacity, and we have ample sewer capacity, uh, but in different parts of town, we may not have uh, the ability to convey that sewage to Passaic Valley, all right? Water consumption, I know this year we had a particularly wet year, and we spoke about that, and uh, our consumption was down, but should we continue to develop, that can also be impacted. I spoke with Commissioner Rogers uh, about the health department. I mean, uh, they're, they're, wet, they're up about 15% in service calls, all right? The school situation with, with population and uh, shortages of space, all right, are not totally attributed to, um, to the multifamily housing. As a matter of fact, there's only 24 more students from 16 to 17, all right? But there is the possibility that there's a small impact there, and I'm waiting for the 18 numbers from uh, from the board that I understand they either have or will be getting very shortly. But that, in conjunction with some of the, the recent home sales over the past year or so, and especially in the Washington School area, all right, are impacting you know what's going on. I see. I know in Parks and Rec, our numbers are up in uh, public safety. I know you, you're at, you're about, at about 48,000 uh, calls for service. All right, you're up about 10 to 15 percent in that area. Same thing with fire. I mean, fire's up, EMS is up, the courts are up. So it does the, 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 the whole advent of additional units have an impact on the township? Yes, I believe it does. All right. Uh, and again, that's just one person's opinion. Uh, but I just wanted to give everyone an overview as to where I was with this and what Basically, my conclusion is or some of my conclusions and the fact that I believe that we need to look at this even further because there's not only the, the, the drain all right, or the stresses on services, um, there's also a psychological effect that, that's affecting some folks. All right, because with the advent of apartments, and we always try to accommodate, you know, uh, the greater population, you know, or the millennials, you know, the baby boomers, uh, us empty nesters. Uh, so we need a good mix, but I think we need to look at this moving forward in greater detail, all right, to see exactly what the cost is to us, what the psychological effect is, how it's impacting traffic, how it's impacting services, and a wide range of other things. So I don't want to, I don't want to take up too much time this evening, but I want everyone to know, all right, that, you know, the, the work has in fact been done, just that I've been delayed in, in actually getting it printed, but I'm hoping to have that done by the next meeting. Thank you, Mayor. Well, thank you, Commissioner. Look forward to seeing that, that report. And basically what it's going to do, it's going to stimulate thought and discussion and hopefully some action. Very good. Any I, other I, just, I, just, I just have, I do have an announcement. And this to say um, one thing regarding Commissioner um, Tucci's report. I think it's really interesting to get that information, especially now that we're going into that phase three at the Hoffman Roach site, because that's when the residential components are going to come in. I have to tell you, I'm not personally sold on all those units going there. The apartments on the corners around town and these abandoned gas stations, I think they, there was a benefit to that. And I don't think any big companies were going to move on these little corners. So I think moving forward with the residential and more stores and restaurants on the Clifton side and all that stuff is going to be instrumental of really how we shape this town moving forward. And I think it's very important to get all the facts before we just cast the vote if, if, if we're going to be more. one and and <clears throat> that's my comment on that i just wanted to um mention tonight also and thank all of our departments during the holiday season but of course i have to just um thank um the nutley uh, um, police department and the fire department and also um the emts because like you said more of the calls are up i have to say this christmas we had hardly any anything in town um our overtime 
dollars. We did spend some, and traditionally we do spend them November and December. Um, we hardly had gone into any of these package thefts. Um, Break-ins were way, way down this year. We have um, a new division um, in the police department, which we're calling anti-crime. And I don't want to get into what we do, but you know, we are. Um, it's not the traditional policing in the Nutley Police Department that it's been over the um, years. There's people out in plain clothes now, and and all different things to really deter um, the crime in Nutley. So I just want to say, you know, and again. The, Fire department was busy on uh, medical calls as well. Um, they did a great job with fire prevention with all the Christmas trees around town. Um, and it's, it was just, you know, I think they deserve, you know, just a, a shout out to them, and along with the EMTs. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other announcements, Commissioner? Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, encourage the public to come out to the next meeting and those thereafter to continue the dialogue on the issue of term limits. I think that uh, we should give, and I, and, I, and I know you all feel this way too, give every citizen who wants to participate in the discussion an opportunity to express their views, whether it's pro or con. Uh, we hear what they have to say, we look at the legal issues, but I believe there's a way, there is a pathway to get to the goal, and the goal is to increase public participation in the boards and in the things we do here. So. If there are legal roadblocks, and I'm convinced there are, I'm not going to tell you I'm not, I'm convinced there are, uh, there may be a way, and I think uh, I've got the way, but I'm not going to talk about that until we actually get everyone involved. Look, uh, uh, the best uh, way to handle this is people being informed, getting educated. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that the people could educate us on some things, and we could certainly educate them on some things. But what we saw here that night, I, I was encouraged over that. That was good civil discussion over a very, very important issue to everyone. So I would like to just encourage people, uh, if you all don't mind, to start coming out next week and to be articulate and to uh, express their views on this issue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, uh, Commissioner. In regard to that, uh, we had six people submit resumes for interest in serving on the boards. Uh, I interviewed five of the people. One could not make it, they were in the hospital. And out of the five, four were to boards. So. Thank you. So, Mayor, just one more. Since it's the new year and everybody's got something on their mind, uh, I apologize for my voice. Just uh, bringing in the new year with the new year cold. Uh, but something that's been on my mind, uh, and we haven't really talked about that much about this. Uh, and there's this whole debate uh, in whether you're on the side of agreeing with or disagreeing with the notion of climate change uh, and so on. Um, I'm seeing, starting to see more and more that uh, towns are starting to take up the discussion around what we should be doing to support the environment. Um, and things like whether or not we should, um, you know, for example, as a town, limit the use of plastic straws, plastic containers, plastic bags, throw away disposable type items, and whether or not we should encourage an alternative, such as maybe supplying people with reusable bags for shopping and things like that that promote that. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's something that we should look to as a board to begin a conversation about how we can actually be more proactive in understanding what the influences are on our environment, and, and this at a simple level uh, at the local level. I think it's, it's important that we begin to have that dialogue. So I would look forward to being able to, being able to do that. Commissioner, just as a point of information, uh, there are a farmer's market. Uh, over the years, we have supplied reusable bags through the Go Green yeah. initiative and Green Nutley. So uh, in that effort, they've been out there for free or a dollar. It was very yeah. cheap. Yeah. I just think we should you know, think about how do we you know, look at how do we expand things like that. And it's, it's not something that, that I have to do. I think we all, as a board, can look at something like that because well, you know, you were looking at, you know, you think about what's the impact on our recycling costs, what's on our garbage removal costs, what's the impact on our shores, our beaches, the environment, sea life, whatever, where these things are popping up. I just think it's, it's valuable to have that conversation. Very good. Any other announcements? Um, <clears throat> Commissioner, you want to talk about the uh, ordinance uh, public hearings tonight? That Yes, Mayor, I am requesting that we table those for this evening. Uh, the underlying agreements are 
just about ready, but they haven't been inked yet, and I would want to make sure that those are available prior to having a public hearing on those ordinances. So I suggest we table those, and, and I fully expect them to be ready at the next meeting. I'm disappointed they weren't ready tonight, but, uh, but I will have them for the next meeting. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Tucci, resolutions? Yes, thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Whereas sealed bids were received for plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration service and purchases on Wednesday, December 27, 2018, whereas Advanced Mechanical Corp, 9 Falstrom Corp, State, New Jersey, was the low bidder at service per hour rate for HVAC of $80 and plumbing per hour rate of the same $80, and whereas the contract is not to exceed $90,000 and funds are available from account. 9-01-508-200 for services contingent upon the adoption of the 2019 budget with an option to extend for one year. Having been certified by the Chief Financial Officer, said certification being attached to this resolution, now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Nutley County of Essex State of New Jersey that a contract for plumbing, heating, air conditioning, and refrigeration service and purchases of equipment be awarded to Advanced Mechanical Corp, which is wholly owned by a Nutley resident. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarfelli. Aye. Whereas sealed bids were received on December 12, 2018 for recreation uniforms, equipment and supplies in the Township of Nutley, and whereas BSN Sports PO Box 49 Jenkintown PA submitted a proposal as per the attached sheet, and whereas funds are available from accounts T-24909-901 through T-24909915 in an amount not to exceed 27800 and have been certified by the Chief Financial Officer. Now therefore be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of Township of Nutley County of Essex State of New Jersey that a contract for recreation uniforms equipment and supplies be awarded to BSN Sports PO Box 49 Jenkintown PA as per the attached sheet and the mayor and township clerk B and they are hereby authorized to enter into and sign said contract for the township of Nutley I move the resolution Commissioner Rogers aye Commissioner Tucci aye Commissioner Evans aye Commissioner Petraco aye Mayor Scarpelli aye where a sealed bids were received on December 12, 2018 for recreation uniforms, equipment, and supplies in the Township of Nutley, and whereas Dot Designing LLC 242 Possum Hollow Road, Monroe Township, submitted a proposal as per the attached sheet, and whereas funds are available from accounts T-24909-901 through T-24909915 in an amount not to exceed 21000 and have been certified by the Chief Financial Officer. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Nutley and the County of Essex State New Jersey that a contract for recreation uniforms equipment and supplies be awarded to dot designing LLC 242 Possum Hollow Road Monroe Township as per the attached sheet and the mayor and township clerk be and they are hereby authorized to enter into and sign said contract for the township of Nully I move the resolution second Commissioner Rogers aye Commissioner Tucci aye Commissioner Evans aye Commissioner Petraco aye Mayor Scarpelli aye that's all I have Mayor Commissioner Evans thank you Mayor Whereas, given the recent retirement of township construction official, the township desires to conduct an independent review of the code enforcement department in order to ensure that the department is compliant with the most recent uh, current practices and procedures of both the state uniform construction code and our local zoning code. Whereas, the township has a need to hire an attorney as a professional service who possesses the special knowledge and experience to conduct the above review through a non-fair and non-open process pursuant to provisions of NJSA 1944A uh, 20.4 and 20.5 as appropriate and NJSA 28.11.1 uh, uh, as amended, whereas Timothy Cunningham is the former director of the New Jersey Division of Community Affairs where he has had oversight of all municipalities across the state of New Jersey and meets the criteria above, whereas Mr. Cunningham of Archer Griner Attorneys at Law located at 10 Highway 35 Red Bank uh, New Jersey has submitted a proposal to conduct this review for an amount not to exceed $16,000, whereas the firm has completed and submitted their business entity disclosure certification, which certifies that they have not made any reportable disqualifying contributions to a political or candidate committee in the Township of Nutley in the previous one year that would violate NJSA 1944A 20.5 and or the Township's local pay-to-play ordinance or the election law enforcement commission dis disclosure requirements that the contract will bar Timothy Cunningham from making any reportable contributions 
through the term of the contract, whereas funds are available in account 901-218-205, which have been certified by the Chief's Financial Officer subject to the adoption of the 2019 budget set certification attached to this resolution. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the Township of Nutley County of Essex, State of New Jersey, does hereby resolve and authorize that the Mayor of the Township Clerk are hereby authorized and directed to execute, seal, and deliver a 2019 contract for professional services with uh, Timothy Cunningham, not to exceed uh, $16,000 for a term beginning January 1, 2019 through June 30th, 2019. A copy of this resolution shall be, as well as the contract and business disclosure entity certification and business entity disclosure of campaign contributions shall be placed on file with the clerk, as well as the resolution will be published as required by law within 10 days of passage. So move. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. Thank you, Mayor. Whereas bids for the 2017 various roadway improvement project were received and opened on Wednesday, June 14, 2017, and whereas DNL paving contract through 675 Franklin Avenue was the low bidder, whereas the bid for the 2017 various roadway improvements was in the base bid amount of $367,719.15. Alternate bid number one in the amount of $17,269.25 and alternate bid number two in the amount of $45,771.09 for a total contract bid of $430,759.49. Whereas the Township of Nutley entered into a contract with DNL, DNL paving contractors for the amount of $430,759.49. Whereas change order number one for the base bid has been authorized for a decrease in the amount of $57,268.64. And alternate number one has been authorized for an increase in the amount of $2,144. And alternate number two has been authorized for a decrease in the amount of $6,227.71. And whereas the original contract amount is being decreased in the amount of $61,000. $352.35. The credit to ordinance number 3295A, GO4113401, is reflected the adjusted contract price of $369,407.14. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners, Township of Lake County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that change order number one is attached is a change for the contract previously made by the Township of Nutley with DNL paving contractors for the project known as 2017 Various Roadway Improvements and is hereby authorized and approved. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Adams. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. Be resolved by the Board of Commissioners, Township of Nutley County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that Jonathan Bruno be appointed public defender for the Township of Nutley effective January 1st, 2019 and expiring December 31st, 2019. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. Whereas raffle applications were received from the following organizations. Nutley Youth Baseball Club, license number 119, off-premise 50-50 cash raffle to be held Saturday, March 30th, 2019. Nutley Judah Raider Booster Club, license number 219, on-premise merchandise raffle, and license number 319, on-premise 50-50 cash raffle, both to be held Sunday, February 10, 2019, whereas the applications have been reviewed and approved by the municipal clerk and the police department. Now, therefore, it be resolved by the Board of Commissioners of Township of Nutley County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that the aforementioned licenses are approved and the municipal clerk is authorized to issue the raffle license. I move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. Be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of Township of Nutley County of Essex, New Jersey, that in accordance with provision of RS 40A, colon 4-59, that the following transfer of 2018 appropriation reserves be in the same or hereby authorized and approved from the Mayor's Office Salary and Wage, $10,000 to celebration of public events, $10,000 and move the resolution. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. Right, that concludes the business portion of our meeting. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> All persons addressing the Board of Commissioners regarding community concerns should approach the microphone and provide their name and address for the record. Unless further time is granted by the Board, each person shall limit their address to five minutes. All remarks to the Board and its individual members must be addressed to the Mayor. 
The mayor may defer citizens' comments to the appropriate member of the board. Dialogue between citizens and others addressing the board shall be allowed unless the mayor, presiding officer, or the majority of the membership of the board shall determine that the interests of the quorum and or the expeditious conduct of municipal business are being adversely affected by such dialogue. Marie Moore, 462 Chestnut Street. Mr. Scarpelli, I have a few follow-up questions. Um, the employee handbook, I thought that would have been out by now. Is that going to be much longer? I think we're really close. Mr. John Tempo? It's in final revisions, uh, Mayor, and I'm going to be distributing it to the commissioners hopefully by Friday. Is that, is that based on a MEL? Um, Partly, yes. Part, are you using the state for, uh, for uh, is there any anti-nepotism in there? I'm sure you'll get a chance to see it, Mr. Moore, but there's a lot of provisions. It's very long. There is a provision partly for that, yes. And uh, the last meeting, I had asked for a copy of the pilot report. I called, and they said it wasn't available. Will that be available anytime soon? It's, it's, that's one of the things for the resolute, the ordinance that we're waiting for. It's, still, it's almost finalized. The pilot agreement? Yes. Yeah, it's almost finalized. We'll, we'll be able to produce it at the clerk's office. Shortly. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Evans. Uh, this evening, you just made a suggestion about um, the straws and the bags. I would seriously suggest this is an ample opportunity for you not to do this by the commissioners, but by have citizens. There's so much controversy over this that I think that if you're going to impose an ordinance of some type, possibly, that the citizens should at least have some say in it because the pictures of getting rid of plastic straws because they were stuck in a turtle's nose or all over. But I think that I commend you for that. However, I do think that the bulk of the opinions should be from the citizens because they're the ones that throw the trash out. They're the ones that are going to have to live with it. It's easy for you to say, as a, as a, a public official, here's an ordinance, I'm going to sign it. But to ask the people to actually participate in it. Because I... I've, we just, I just participated in a debate on this, and it's extremely controversial. But to say that, you, to find five citizens that would sit down and try to come up with a resolution, I think that would be commendable for the Board of Commissioners to do that. Thank you, Mr. Moore. I, I agree with you. It's not, it's not something that we just put together an ordinance as a board. I believe there should be public discussion about that. In fact, there should be a public discussion here in chambers where the topic is being discussed and not voted on, just an open discussion about what... Because it, there's so much controversy. All the town has tried it now. Yeah. It, I think they're regretting yeah. it. <laughs> no, you got to separate the wheat from the chafe. And I, yes, I, I yes. I absolutely agree with you. Mr. P Petraco, a few weeks ago, I approached you with the possibility of addressing overnight parking. And you said if I came up with an idea that I could submit it to you. And I think I've you have a suggestion. On Hillside and Chestnut Street, mm -hmm. 6 o'clock in the morning, either direction, there's at least 40 cars that are parked on the street. Now, I'm not in here to ask them to be enforced. What I'm asking to is that we actually address the overnight parking because there's more and more apartments, there's more and more cars on the street. And I would like to suggest that recently you've been using the permit process. Those four streets that would have a permit that allowed people to park overnight might be very helpful because it's grow it seems to be a growing problem. I have to say, I, are you done? Or? Yes. I have to say, it's, I have been getting bombarded at my store about this overnight parking. Like, not, like never before, truthfully. And I have to say that, you know, I know it's always been that we don't really want to change that. We think it's the difference between, you know, safety with the police officers and all, you know, and it separates us from the neighboring towns and with the snow plowing and all that stuff. But I have to say I've never gotten so many complaints about this overnight parking. And we've been trying to limit the number of people calling in and keep granting the same permission over and over again. So I, I think that um, 2019, that there's going to have to be some type of a discussion of some kind of options. What, what they may be, you know, um, that we would have to discuss with the Board of Commissioners. Commissioner, can, well. I, can I add to that? Yes. With your permission. 
also as part of the follow-up to this white paper all right it, it includes traffic and parking and impact on quality of life so that's going to be one of the elements that will in fact be looked at I, I, so I, it, may, it may assist you it's not it's not an easy question uh, I know we've all pretty much stated what our positions have been in the past uh, but uh, who knows maybe there's another perspective yeah if, if, if I may uh, just to add to the uh, conversation may uh, Commissioner Tucci uh, one thing you might want to do just a suggestion is to find the uh, impact uh, regarding criminal activity overnight in the surrounding mm -hmm. communities. Uh, that's a real concern. Excellent. That doesn't mean it would kill, you know, uh, the idea of, of, of working on this. But I, I'll tell you what, I, I, I know things are changing, but boy, I'll tell you, it's, it's great to see no cars on my street mm -hmm. overnight. And when I make a phone call, the police are there in one minute. So, but I think you got a good point. It should be a public discussion. It's something to think about. I, I, I think we to, just to clarify, we're not saying eliminate the ordinance. We want to try to put that to rest. Okay. However, if, if you're saying, as, as this particular, if you put one block, Chestnut and Hillside, if one block either way, you've limited it. Whether you like it or not, it's there. If you drive down there at 6 o'clock in the morning, there's about so 40 cars. So your suggestion <laughs> just target the areas where to, there's a problem. Just the, that, just that area that it might be a. It, it's. You know. Hey, look, I, I think that's a good idea. If you have a certain area where there's a serious problem, and the people say, "Hey, look, we need relief," maybe that's something to look at. Well, maybe you have you a bicycle. Um, you have a bicycle yeah, that what, one of the, the the residents attaches to a parking meter, which is unsafe. And you could very simply put in a pole that is specifically designed for for bikes to lock them up. There's no reason that have to lock them up to an existing parking meter because somebody could get hurt. Good but point. to ignore it is, is to our own detriment because it's there whether we like it or not. Good. Good Thank you, Mr. Moore. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address the Board of Commissioners this evening? Tammy Rossi, 28 Colonial Terrace. Um, regarding the white paper, um, so you will have it at the next meeting, correct? So how long will the deliberations take to create that definition for mixed use and density based on the findings of the white paper? My, oh. my anticipation is that once we distribute the white paper, we, we will then accept comments from the public, from the Board of Commissioners, and then we will plot a course of action, uh, which I believe will, will beg the question as to whether or not we need to continue with this investigation, because what, what will occur as a result of this, all right, is going to impact this community for many years to come. All right, not only infrastructure-wise, but traffic-wise, parking-wise, things are changing. All right, but what we need to do is we need to, to get some sort of balance, all right, so that we, we don't lose the charm and character that has attracted people to Nutley for years. All right, and what we don't want to do is create a community with shallow roots, all right, where our children and our children's children don't have the, the, the want to come back here and to raise their families here. That's what separates us from many other communities. And that's why we don't have a lot of the problems that other communities have, along with parking issues and, and different traffic uh, issues and, you know, how we manage our water department and our sewer department and, mm -hmm. you know, code enforcement and health and, and everything else. I think, I think the time is right for us to take a global view of what's going on in the township and really get a vision for the future because we all have opinions, all right? And I'm sure there's some credibility wow. to what each and every one of us are thinking and, and what we're saying, but no one's an expert, all right? And if, if, if we listen and we don't just always talk all the time, there is the likelihood that we're going to learn something that we don't already know. With regards to um, the street parking, overnight parking, with the apartments on Chestnut Street by Franklin Ave up the hill, there's mm -hmm. no parking lot for that apartment building on the left? Okay. Is that correct? So all of those tenants are just parking on the street. Is there a limit? Oh, I, I don't know. Are they parking on the street, are they Commissioner? I, I'm, I'm sorry. Mr. Moore just said Chestnut there Street. were... 
Yeah, Mr. Moore said there could be anywhere up to 40 cars parked on the hillside in Chestnut. Yeah, that's for that apartment building. So my question is, have you placed any restrictions on how many cars are allowed per unit in these apartments? Through the police department or? No, 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 no. How many cars are permitted per apartment, per apartment unit? Yeah, well, I mean, that's- To we, limit the we, number uh, of cars. I think cars. that's beyond our control, Ms. Rossi. No, she, I think you're asking about when you're planning to build an apartment building. That's well, in right the, now that- that's, the, in, that's in the zoning rules and guidelines yeah, there. So, and then I'm wondering about that because in the uh, definition for mixed use and density that was proposed, I believe it was 1.5 parking spaces. I think you're right. And if it's, if it's allowed to be 1.5, will it result in people parking on the street? No, they have to provide that parking on site. But 0.5 isn't really a parking one, spot. 1.5. Well, 1.5. We, I know there's one. There's right. one full spot to accommodate one car. Actually, I, what actually, is a half of a spot going to accommodate a motorcycle? Well, it's the total number of units times 1.5. It still doesn't work mathematically. A whole car or half a car, it's, it's going to. So how? So, uh, so if you have ten apartments, right? Right. You need fifteen spots. That's how it's going right. to work out. That, okay. that is how it works. Jamie, I, I, maybe I could help clarify this because I remember years ago we had this discussion. You're right. It's one point five. It was never ever meant to have enough parking spaces for the tenants there. That 0.5 was to add up for visitors at the time. I see. Uh, okay. What happened was no one ever expected the growth uh, as we have today. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's something that uh, perhaps has to be looked at. I, pro perhaps it with new construction and there goes your white paper, Commissioner. Something to, to look at. But that's the reason why they had the 1.5. At, at least the way it was explained to me years ago. Okay. And then my last question is for, um, Mr. Genentempo, are we getting any closer to the litigation or maybe not necessarily litigation, but negotiations with the developer who incurred violations? Sure. Well, I just got an email five minutes ago from the attorney, so we are involved continuously in the negotiations. So we're still working on a document. It's been very difficult. Um, the devil is always in the details, mm -hmm. and this is this is uh, how long it's taken. We were hoping to have it done by now, but I think the holidays kind of screwed it up a little bit too. But, but it, right now, though, the, the clock is ticking, so the fines per infraction well, per no, day are adding up, right? That's right. That's to the detriment of the developers. So okay. you know, there's there's no artificial clock, but yes, I mean, from that purpose, yeah, I agree. Okay, thank you. And and just it, this is more of a suggestion, Mr. Evans, because I think it's a great idea um, regarding the uh, limitation or elimination of plastic bags and straws is to incorporate the shop right where people are grocery shopping. And if they have departments where they can offer bulk product with a scoop and people can use re reusable bags, because whenever you buy a bag of rice or beans or whatever, there's plastic. So if there is a way to make the main grocery store in town a little more environmentally friendly, that would be, I think, welcomed by many citizens in town. Something to consider. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address the Board of Commissions this evening? Seeing none. Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Commissioner Rogers. Aye. Commissioner Tucci. Aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Commissioner Petraco. Aye. Mayor Scarpelli. Aye. And the time Happy is New Year, everybody. Time is 7.50.